Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com and in this video we are going to put together our paintball that we're going to be shooting as well as introducing you to a new scene that we're going to add to our game. So let's get started. First, we're going to go to our assets folder and we're going to grab a new piece of the puzzle. We're going to grab this paint ammo and we're going to drag it into our game objects. Boom, just like that. Now come back to Unity. So you'll notice we've got a prefab. And if we go and click on that, it's really just a ball. That's all it is, with a mesh renderer and a rigid body. But we need to add something to make this usable for us. So let's right click on this scripts folder, and we're going to create a brand new C-sharp script. And we're going to call this color randomizer. Now, the prefab in and of itself works just fine. The problem is, as you'll notice, it's just a red ball, right? Well, it's not very exciting if the whole game is just red paint. So let's double click on the color randomizer script. And what this script is going to do is it's going to allow us to randomly select the color for our paintball. Let's get rid of this update function and get rid of the comments above start. And we're just going to add a single serialized field. And it's going to be private color array colors. And we're going to set that to a new color array. And we're going to fill it with a couple of colors that I've selected that fit the color scheme. There we go. That's what I want. So the first one is going to be a red color. Let's say new color. And we're going to say 255.0F. This thing will get out of the way. There we go. 255.0F divided by 255.0F. Now you might be wondering why I'm doing this. It's because I have the RGBA values, but this is except this is expecting a bunch of percentages. So we're just grabbing the percentage of what the RGB value is out of 255. So 31.0F divided by 255.0F. And I'm actually going to copy this divided by 255.0F. I'm just going to use it that way. 63.0F divided by 255.0F, and then 1. Cool. We have our first color. This looks like an error underline, but that's actually the color. So let's grab this, and I'm going to paste it just a few times, two, three, four, five, and then add one color to the very end, color.black. Cool. Now let's update these values. For the second color in our list, let's do 17, 255, and 10 the third color, we'll do 0, 127, and 255. For the fourth color, we're going to want to leave this 255. This second value will update to 115. And the third value is going to be 0. And for our last custom color, we're going to do 220, 0, and 244. And that'll give us a nice purple. Cool. Perfect. So how do we use this? It's actually pretty simple. Let's create a new function called private void update color. And we're going to grab this components renderer. So let's say get component renderer. And we're going to say renderer dot material dot shader equals shader dot find 
underscore color. And what that's doing is it's grabbing the color value from our renderer's shader. Well, the material's shader on our renderer. And we're just going to say color, random color equals colors. And then we're going into the array. And we're going to find random dot range between 0 and colors dot length. We're just going into the array, finding a random color out of the bunch, and using it. Then we're just going to say renderer dot material dot set color. And we're going to grab the color property. And random color. Now do note that the color property here has a capital C. That's important. It's case sensitive. And then we're going to say renderer.material.shader equals shader.find. And then renderer.material.setColor underscore spec color random color. Cool. So with that, we've now got the function to update our materials color on our paintball. So let's go up to start and we're just going to say update color. And now every time this ball initializes, it's going to pick out a random color. Perfect. Let's save. And let's go back to Unity. And now that we've got that worked out, let's click on our paintball. And we're going to come down and add the color randomizer. Cool. And as you can see, we've got six colors currently set that it's going to pick between. And they're all kind of this bright, cartoony shade of different colors to give it that almost cartoonized feel with the paint. And if you're paying attention, you'll also notice that those colors match our paint splotches on our UI. So how do we know that this is working? Well, that's actually pretty easy. We're going to go ahead and assign it to our tank. So let's go select the tank prefab. And if you remember this projectile, that's where we're going to put this. So let's drag it and drop it. Now there's one more thing that we need to add to test this. I mean, adding this isn't necessary to test it per se but we're going to anyways. I like to have a special scene in all of my games called the debug scene. So let's right click on the scenes folder, create, and we're going to go to scene. And I'm going to name this debug land. Now the point of debug land is it's kind of an open playground where I can do whatever I need to do to test out different components and see how they react all on their own. This becomes especially important with AR games because the process to set up an AR game for testing with Unity is fairly involved, and it's going to involve opening up other IDEs and compiling it and a whole big mess. So I really want to do that as little as possible. So what I'm going to do is set up the scene, make sure everything's working, and then when I get to a point where I feel like, hey, I need to double check that this is working, I feel like it is, but I need to be sure, then we can plug in our phones and run it on an actual device to test. But AR on a computer doesn't work, and it takes a while to compile everything and test it. So especially where I'm doing things on the fly, just experimenting, I want a place where I can do that. So let's open our debug scene, our debug land scene, and you'll notice we have a fresh new place to play. So I'm going to pull down this divider so that the scene is much larger and easier to work with. I'm going to go ahead and right click on here, and I'm going to create a 3D object. I'm going to make a plane, and it's just a normal plane. Nothing too special about it, but I am going to stretch it out quite a ways. About 6-ish, I think. So let's go change this scale for the x, y, and z axes to 6. And then I'm just going to go ahead and add 
a box collider to it. Perfect. And now I'm just going to rename this ground. And I really hate this white harsh material that's currently on it. So I'm just going to swap that out for something different. So let's go into this mesh renderer and go into the materials. And I'm going to find something, something that looks a little better. How about this Explorer Black provided to us by Mapbox? Perfect. Now to test out our tank, it's actually pretty simple. I'm going to save this scene just so I don't forget to do that later. And I'm going to grab the prefab. And I'm going to drop it onto the scene. Let's double click. And let's raise this up a bit so it's above. Cool. So we're just going to have a look and see what all we need to set here. Um, Z is going to need to be a 1 in the rotation axis. And that's because if I go ahead and select this tank and rotate it here the way that we're going to want it to rotate, you'll notice that that is along the Z axis. And our fire rate is at 5 seconds, shot force is at 1500, and move speed is at 0.2. Um, while we're debugging, at the very least, I want to drop this down to maybe 0 0.05, see how that does for us. And so let's go ahead and press play and see what happens. Okay, cool. So it's rotating the way it should. And it's creating paintballs, but I don't see them anywhere. Um, that could be for a couple of reasons. But if we go and look at this, it is... Traveling somewhere really fast. So let's go ahead and do a couple of things here. Let's go to the enemy tank, and we're going to take down this shot force. Down to maybe 50. Because it's not a bullet, we don't want it traveling that fast. And then I'm going to go check one other thing. Let's go to the paintball object. And you'll notice that use gravity is still turned on. So let's turn that off. And that should be good. One other thing we want to look at is, are these balls changing color? So let's go ahead and select the prefab that we currently have on here. And I'm going to press play and then immediately pause once it starts up. And we're going to drop the shot force down to zero the move speed down to zero, and the fire rate to one. And we want to come and check out what is coming out of the front of this tank. So I'm going to double click the tank so I can get right up close and personal and then unpause. OK. So you'll notice we've got a whole bunch of different colors coming out. They look nice and random. Perfect. So it looks like that colorizer for our paintballs worked great. And then one other issue that I noticed is we have a bit of a tag conflict. The water ball is currently set to this lowercase projectile, but we were looking for the uppercase projectile on the enemy tank. Now, common syntax and naming conventions say that tags should start with an uppercase, the same way that Unity has it all. So let's go ahead and update that real quick. Let's go to the add tag menu. And we're going to remove this projectile tag. And we're going to add a new projectile tag with a capital P. And then let's come down to the water ball. And we're going to add that tag. But what do we do about this paintball? Well, we're going to go ahead and add another tag. And we're going to call this enemy projectile. And then we're going to come back to the paintball and add that tag. And that's it. We're going to go ahead and call this video good. So I'm going to save. And then we're going to update collab. And we're going to say added debug land and various fixes. Publish now. 
and we're up to date. Perfect. So in this video, we set up our colorizer on our paint balls. We fixed a couple of tag issues. We created the debug land so that we could have a place where we can test things out and work on them without having to deal too much with the AR setting. And we've really set ourselves up to get moving with generating tanks and turning this into a real game. So I'm excited to move on. Great job following along. This is Ben with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.